recently there was a post and a Yosemite subreddit and, and my, my website, my guide was mentioned. Basically the guy said, I'm looking at seven different guides for clouds rest and they all have different total climbing figures here. They all have different total ascent figures, like which one is right? And I figured this would be a good time to clear up some confusion around what total ascent is because I get questions about it a lot and I get people telling me I'm right, I'm wrong. There's a few different factors uh, that go into it. In this video, I'm just gonna show you how total ascent is calculated, how it's different than elevation gain and why every time you go out on the trail and you measure your altitude with your wearable or phone or handheld, the elevation is always off a little bit and also tell you how to kind of address that and normalize it. So let's start with what we're talking about. Let's talk about a total ascent. So total ascent is the total amount of climbing that you're going to do in a hike. It's the, the cumulative amount of climbing that we're doing, right? So if I'm starting at the bottom and I'm climbing to the top, it's how much I've climbed up. And if you're looking at a hike that's relatively simple where you're starting at the bottom of a mountain and you're climbing to the top of the mountain, it's really as easy as taking the top elevation, subtracting the bottom elevation, and that's how many vertical feet that you're climbing. So pretty simple. Now what happens when you have lots of ups and downs on the hike like clouds rest, right? Not lots of ups and downs in this one, but we have a couple ups and downs. So let's look at the profile here. We have this climb in the beginning, right? So that's an ascent. And then we go downhill and then we have the climb up the clouds rest. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking these two climbs and adding them together. And then when we climb back, we have to climb back up this the hike, the climb in the middle here. So there's really three big climbs along the way and total ascent is the total of all of these climbs. Now these are big climbs, but there's lots of little undulations, but every time there's a little uphill, we're adding uh, that to the total ascent. And that's giving us the total vertical feet that we've climbed uphill on a hike. Now, why is this helpful? Generally, when you look at a hike, you can look at the total uh, ascent figure and figure out how hard it's gonna be, right? So if I have a 10 mile hike and I have a thousand total feet of climbing, that's not too much climbing. But if I have a 10 mile hike and there's 6,000 6, feet of climbing, that's a lot more climbing. That's gonna be a much har harder hike because I'm going uh, much more uphill. There's a lot more uphill in that. In the defense of some of the ones that are wrong on this clouds rest post, they're using a term called elevation gain. Now this is tricky because if I think of elevation gain and I think other people probably think of it the same way, I'm thinking about the gain in eleva elevation. I'm not thinking of all the elevations together. I'm thinking about the bottom or the top minus the bottom, right? And that's an incorrect way to look at elevation gain. Elevation gain is, is really synonymous with total ascent. And really what it refers to is cumulative elevation gain, but that doesn't fit on the little data field on your watch or your handheld. And if you have some older garments or if you have other products, you might see elevation gain used synonymously with total ascent. All of the new Garmin things, I've noticed they all shifted to total ascent. It doesn't say elevation gain anymore. If you update your firmware, it's all total ascent on Garmin Connect, all total ascent, because that's an easier term to wrap your head around. But when you look at these clouds rest figures here, you could see that some of them are obviously way lower, and that's because they're taking the top of the hike and the bottom of the hike, and they're subtracting it. They're not taking all these undulations and climbs in the middle into effect. So those are really incorrect. And these, these blogs are not the only culprits here. I've seen this quite a bit on National Park Service uh, hike guides. So what you need to do is when you look at a hike, if, if it's not from a source you're familiar with, go to the elevation profile or interactive map and just look and see how much climbing is in there. You can kind of eyeball how much you're going to have to climb if you just run over an elevation profile and something like a Cal Topo or sometimes there's an interactive uh, one on a website. But look at that and you'll get an idea for how much climbing climbing you're gonna have to do, always double check the elevation. Now, even if the elevation is in the ballpark, if you have two, you know, two websites that are counting this elevation gain together the right way, or total sense the right way, they can still be different by maybe tens of feet or maybe even a couple hundred feet. And that's because when you measure elevation with your wearable or, or handheld or an iPhone or whatever it might be, the elevation is always off. 
Most modern instruments like this have a barometric altimeter. They use a barometer to determine your altitude, but it actually, it's a little bit more complicated. I'm not gonna get into the weeds, but it's using your altitude. It's using the elevation data from the map that it has on the watch or the phone or whatever. And it's also looking at your GPS elevation, which you can calculate if you have four satellites uh, for GPS. So it's looking at all these factors and it's you know automatically figuring out what your elevation is. It's almost never correct. And if I do a hike today and I measure my total ascent and I do it tomorrow, I can guarantee I will have a different uh, total ascent figure. If you have the sensor covered, it's under a sleeve or in your pocket, it's gonna affect it if you go from inside to outside, if it's windy, if there is a sudden change in the weather, all these things can affect the barometric altimeter, giving you a different elevation every time. So always use your altimeter on your watch as a general guide. You can, most people just leave the cal calibration automatic. For some things like these garments, you can manually set it. You need an altitude or an altitude and a barometric pressure uh, to do it, but most people don't do that. If you wanna get the altitude and barometric pressure, airports have it because altimeters on airplanes usually need to be calibrated with that information. Uh, and those altimeters are professional instruments because if you have your altitude wrong in a plane, you might crash into something. If you have the altitude wrong on a Garmin Phoenix or whatever it is, it's not really a big deal. That was a lot. I just threw a lot of info at you. Hopefully that was helpful, cleared some stuff up. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment uh, on YouTube. I'll do my best to answer it or have any tips or whatever you can add to the discussion, uh, please do so. And if you like the video, if you can give me a thumbs up, it's an easy way to say thank you. All right, guys, I'm gonna uh, start hiking. All right, see ya.